And remember, if you create a good headline, our task is more than half completed. It will be relatively easy matter to write the copy. On the other hand, if you use a poor headline, it doesn't matter how hard you labor over your copy, because your copy will not be read. Fred E. Hahn, Tested Advertising Methods, 5th edition, page 46. Advertising is not an exact science such as physics, but you could get close to that nonetheless. Let's start with headlines. Fred E. Hahn, the author who wrote the fifth revision of Tested Advertising Methods, analyzed 10 successful and unsuccessful headlines and found 4 optimal headline appeals. The first and most important of them is self-interest. Out of 10 very successful ad headlines, each and every one of them contained self-interest. Self-interest means a description of the benefit the reader may get from engaging in the requested action in the ad. This may seem obvious, but it is often forgotten nonetheless. For example, in the headline, The Deaf Now Hear Whispers, the reader knows that what is advertised is some sort of a hearing solution. The second optimal headline appeal is news. It may be expressed with words such as now, announcing, introducing, presenting, etc. For example, announcing a new dictionary. Then comes curiosity. Curiosity is a great addition to self-interest, but alone may often fail miserably. For example, the headline What's wrong with this picture? Which is accompanied by an illustration of a man walking in between two women. The last one is the quick and easy appeal. For example, how I improved my memory in one evening. Exercise. Write 10 possible headlines for your next content piece. Include self-interest and at least one more appeal in each headline. You may then send those to my mail and, who knows, maybe even get some feedback. Tested Advertising Method 1 is extra focus on the headline. One of the very difficult things about being a content creator is uncertainty. You often don't know if your content will help someone or is helping someone. The problem is that before you can do anything to improve your content's effectiveness, you need to know how effective it is in the first place. Here are three ways to test your content in order for you to better know how well you're doing. The first way is called A-B test. In essence, it is the launching of two different ads, for us, maybe content pieces, which are identical apart for one thing that is different in each of them. Then you measure the engagement from both. The piece that gets more engagement is the one with the more effective variable. A most common example of this is using two different headlines with a completely identical content piece. The second way is not very objective, but it may still help. It is laying the content aside for a day, and then, when you come back to it, you'll see things you haven't seen before and edit them. It will be a little bit like letting someone else view it. You may then remove a sentence, replace longer words with shorter words, etc. The third way you could use is to have some sort of incentive in each content piece. A famous example of this is a PDF download. Here are three differences between an A-B test and incentives that came to mind. 1. 
A-B tests compare the effectiveness of one specific variable, while incentives may compare content with many different variables. 2. A-B tests usually require payment for ads or an established email list, while incentives measure all of the traffic you get without additional requirements. 3. A-B tests are used for a short time period, while incentives will test your content so long as the content exists. Which one or more of these three tests will you use to test your next content piece? Tested Advertising Method 2 is Test Your Content. In your YouTube thumbnail, consider using a face of a person, says the suggestion in the TubeBuddy SEO tool. Indeed, according to Han, human heads are very effective. He says that lots of sales ads with human head images are repeated, which means they are profitable, which then means that human heads are likely effective. Now, how about artistic illustrations versus photographs? Han says that he was most attracted to advertisements with photographs when he was looking for a travel bag, because he knew he wouldn't be disappointed if he went to the store to check it out. On the other hand, artistic illustrations are often too idealized and not realistic which might get you disappointed if you go to its store. That said, if your product is an illustration, just like my own for the time being, my opinion is that presenting it with an illustration instead of a photograph would be more realistic. And would probably be Han's advice too, judging by the example he gave. How will you Include a realistic illustration, or people heads, in one of the illustrations in your next content piece. Tested advertising method 3 is use effective illustrations. As he was writing his blog post, the words were flowing out of Brad's keyboard faster than the running speed of Usain Bolt. The blog post was becoming longer and longer by the second. After about 30 minutes, he was finished. Brad felt he had so much to tell, and yet so little space to do it. He now had to reduce what he wrote to a little bit less than 20,000 words. Something more like 1,500 words. How did he manage to write that much? You would possibly say, he had a lot of training, and he is very experienced. Perhaps that is true, but still, when he just sat down to write that content piece, he stared at the blank page for 20 minutes, just thinking how he should start. Then he started writing, and slowly warmed up, just like a motor of a car in the winter. It needs some time to warm up, before it may go at full speed. So what did he do to get to that incredible speed? It's not necessarily easy, but simple. Once you're two minutes in, your probability of finishing rises dramatically. Side note, a link to a video explaining the two-minute rule is found in the description. So, Brad started writing. No matter how much of a nonsense it sounded like, he kept writing more and more, until he felt like all his thoughts were exhausted. Then, and only then, once his text was as long as Tolstoy's novel, War and Peace, he began editing it, removing paragraphs, sentences, changing the longer words for shorter ones, etc. Here's how Pat Flynn puts it in his interview at the podcast Authors Who Lead. Let it go, let it flow, don't edit. And I've heard of stories of people taking off their delete key off of their keyboard 
to literally not give themselves the chance to even delete. How long will you write without deleting in your next content piece? Tested advertising method 4 is start writing nonsense. Thanks for watching, Improvementers. Hope you've learned something or some two things which were new today. If you'd like to get 10 free audiobooks, check out the 10 free audiobooks PDF in the description below. Stay awesome and see you in the next videos. Bye bye!